If you want to know how to avoid working long nights and long weekends as a sports PT, you have to tune into this episode. Um, Hi everyone, welcome back to the podcast. Uh, welcome all new listeners and welcome back to those who have heard my content in the past. If you want to know how to avoid working long nights and long weekends as a sports PT, you have to tune into this episode. Uh, before I go on to the podcast, what is new, what is uh, uh, greater and better in life? Uh, there's always good things. Um, my family is doing fantastic. My wife is going to celebrate uh, her birthday coming up soon, and uh, she is almost going to be 21 again, uh, as she says it. So um, that's been great. Uh, I I think uh, I mentioned on my last podcast, I, I went on a uh, weekend away with the fam um, so that was great uh, get to get some sun uh, it's been finally a little bit more sunny in san diego so we've been out uh, at a pool uh, enjoying time with the family uh, just celebrated uh, easter with the fam so um, that was good uh, personally the fitness side i uh, i am ebbing and flowing at the moment um, maybe some of you are on the same boat but uh, i think i'm averaging five days right now and if you guys have been listening to this podcast i've been doing seven in the past so i, I gotta get back on those two days and uh, it's been an interesting blend of sleep uh, and just life. So many weekend projects and things going on and my kids being in uh, different sports. Uh, my son is loving jujitsu. My wife, or my, my wife, my daughter is still loving ballet and gymnastics. And uh, Jacob is just, uh, he got his first haircut and that was uh that was tough. He looks like a whole year older. So um, that's what's happening in life. Um, but yeah, otherwise, let's go right on to this podcast. So why am I talking about this? So um, I, I was, uh, I was going to title this, uh, podcast, <laughs> why, uh, home exercise programs are a waste of time. And I have a couple different reasons on why, um, I think that a lot of sports physical therapists, um, I think you, you, you're all very motivated, right? You you want to be the best version of yourself and you want to help more people. That's like who you are at the root level. And I get that because that's who I am. What I also do understand is you have to find boundaries within yourself and your personal life and your family. And I'll tell you, because I, I, I've i lived it, I've seen it, I, I know where you're going to have challenges. And one of those challenges is uh, working nights uh, and weekends and putting more and more hours in. And at some point, you kind of have to figure out, like, how do I do this a little bit better, a little bit more efficiently? And uh, that's a real struggle uh, for all sports physical therapists, especially if you're like, you 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 love giving, you love helping, and that's the nature of yourself. Um, but at some point, you give so much of your time and so much of who you are, you have to figure out, how you can get more out of the available time. And um, uh, if you're looking to save more time on the nights and weekends and, and be more efficient with your time that and and learn about strength and conditioning, uh, this is a great podcast for you. So this is why I've done it. Um, I've had so many discussions. Uh, I'm going into quarterly planning uh, with my team this week. And uh, this is where we start to forecast. We look at what we've done over the last quarter and we forecast what the next quarter is going to be like, um, all with an overarching mission to help more people. And um, when that starts to happen, we realize maybe there's a shift of things that we need to do and uh, there's adjusting of responsibilities and, and all these other things. And so ultimately, um, maybe you might have uh, times where you have to take on more things and uh, you have to be more efficient with your time or you waste more time. And that's what it comes down to. So um, that's where it's all coming from. Uh, my team, uh, quarterly planning, uh, the things I've heard, um, just life in general. And all of you are trying to, you can't gain more time, but you can be more efficient with the available hours. So I'm going to outline a couple of different things um, that I've done uh, personally, um, and especially when it comes to home exercise programs, when it comes down to strength and conditioning programs, and how that truly impacts you and how I think that you are wasting mm, five to 10 hours a week that you didn't even know. And uh, that's real. I, I, I truly think that you can gain a little bit more time uh, every single day uh, just from doing some small, simple things. So here we go. All right. So let's start with a uh, – let me let me explain why – how you're wasting some time, and I'll tell you how to fix it, okay? 
So um, when I would design home exercise programs uh, in, in professional sports, uh, or even in my residency, um, I would find myself uh, spending an hour sometimes on really detailed uh, home programs and doing all this stuff. And then if you're like me, uh, you had some athletes or patients that wouldn't do it. And you're like, man, come on, man. Like, I just put all this time in. And, um, you know, they obviously didn't see what you put in. And and that's a barrier for you. It's a frustration. And for me, too. And so at some point, I had to have honest conversations with people. And the way I truly believe is that, um, you know, anytime that you're working with an athlete or a patient, um, it's not their fault. It's not their fault. It's your fault. Why? Because you're the provider. You can see the long-term vision. They can't. They're a, they're a customer. They're they're a, a patient, an athlete. They're your customer. They can't understand the thing that you can help them with, right? And your the difference in your expectations is like you understand it at such a greater level, right? Like if you can just work on this ankle and get this stronger and mobilize this and strengthen this, like you will be so much better. And they're on the other side. Well, why can't you just fix it in a day? I don't understand why is it so hard. And you're like, well, it doesn't work that way, right? So they want instant gratification, and they they're coming from the viewpoint likely of like a surgeon who can get rid of pain like in an instant. Um, they can see it from the side of a dentist who can get rid of pain in an instant. Both of those require some type of like utensils or puncturing or opening of things to remove or excise something to remove that. Well, we can't, right? We're a neuromuscular uh, uh, profession, right? Like that's how we really, we work. And that takes time because if you're talking about nervous system development, that's like four to six weeks. And you're talking about physical stress, you have to remove stress. So it takes us time to create our outcomes. And yes, you can have a one-off, like, hey, I had a one session, two session, pain-free, like uh, patients. But I'm talking about the majority of people you see. So because of that, the patient's expectation, the athlete's expectation is like, I mean, I want to get better fast. I want, I want to, uh, you know, I want to get rid of this toothache. I want to have rid of, get rid of this meniscus tear as quickly as possible. And you're like, well, I don't have any surgical interventions. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to help you with this other version that can actually have a longer benefit, long ter- long time, long term benefit, but it requires that you put some effort into it. And they don't understand that, and your ability to communicate that will help them understand that right so I, I had a conversation with somebody this week and i said um uh that we the 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 difference in outcomes that you can produce has nothing to do with your hands your techniques or anything else it has to do with your ability to communicate there's always a gap in expectations right so for you for my listeners i'm like hey i know where you can go as a professional, you could only see as far as you can. But what I've been able to accomplish in my life, and I'm celebrating this, from a kid from a small town, illiterate, uh, economically challenged, been able to get to a a place where, uh, you know, I I went from uh, a tough high school position to um, a very, very uh, high uh, achieving undergrad. And that was overnight, right? And to be able to go to residency and do a DBT PhD program, be accepted, go on to residency, go on to pro sports, go on to, um, you know, concierge PT, traveling the world, opening a multi-clinic cash-based uh, facilities. I can see like where sports PTs can do it at a different level because I've seen it. I've been in the weight room. I've been on the field. I've been in high trauma sports. I've been in traveling internationally. I've seen it and I know what, what things look like. And I, I just want every sports PT just like yourself to get there and beyond. That's like where that gap, your expectation is like, well, I just want to, I just want to, you know, fix my current patients. I'm like, no, you can do so much more. Like I, there's a gap there that I want you to get to, but in order for me to help you, I have to communicate what I think you can get to. And that's, that's really what happens with your patients and athletes. So how does that ha- have to do with anything that we're talking about wasting time? So listen, the pa- you have to understand the patient's expectation. You have to understand where you are as a professional and where you want that person to get to, right? The only thing that, that is different there is the communication. So you have to help them understand, right? You have a verbal explanation. Then, ready? Every person needs three things to set them up for success. 
right? Number one, they have to have a goal. <laughs> I want you to be pain-free, right? Number two, they have to have a timeline by six weeks. Thirdly, they have to have the resources in order to get that done. And so that's where I'm talking about today, the resource, right? Number one, I think you can always work on your communication skills because that is an art. That is such an art uh, to be able to help somebody and understand um, what, what their roadmap looks like in their recovery. But I'm working on today is the resource. And if you can understand one thing, when you give a resource to somebody in the form, and most sports physical therapists will give a home exercise program, right? A strength and conditioning, what we call it, quote unquote. And here's where you're wasting time. And I've seen it because I've been with strength and conditioning coaches and I've seen them work at a great level. And I'm like, oh, I want to get there. Here's what happens on PTs, ready? Um, Hi, Mr. Smith. Uh, you have uh, knee pain. We've gone through the evaluation. It looks like you have weak this, strong that, uh, in improper here, uh, poor neuromuscular here, blah, blah, blah. Here's your home program for the next week. You give them two to three exercises. Or if you're a real ortho PT, you probably give them 57 exercises that they're not going to do at all. And you give them these pages of exercises, right? And all it did was it addressed their current impairments, right? Like the things that are limiting them from moving forward right now. Then they come back the following week and you're like, oh, that hip's a little bit better. Uh, you're a little stronger here. Let's advance that, quote unquote. Let's give you a, a green band, a blue band, right? And we're going to pick up the reps because you're doing great. Um, so you add more reps, right? So you're adding more volume on top of all these problems. You're adding more resistance, great. Uh, and then two weeks later, they come back and you're like, oh, you're getting so much better here. Let's add more time on this stretch. Let's add uh, exercise number 58 and 59 so you can really waste your time during the week, Mr. Smith. And they start doing all these things. And um, by the end of it, you've designed probably like if they were there for 12 visits, you probably gave 12 different versions of a home exercise program. Maybe one of them was modified. You added weight, blah, blah, blah. So you just spent time on 12 different times modifying a home program, right? Let's just say it took you, if you really care about your patients and athletes, it might take you 15 to 20 minutes to really go through like what are the big things that this person needs. If you really don't care, you just go on a home exercise program um, software and you just select the top three that you've been choosing for the last five years. Um, and so what you're doing there is you're wasting time by giving them weekly updates with more exercises and new things and better things, whatever it may be. Now, let's take Mr. Smith and go backwards. Let's see what you just did over 12 weeks, right? Mr. Smith, at the end of it, had a home exercise program that was different from his first week. Now, what if I told you, now knowing that, what would you have changed on the program to save him time and you time? Here's what would, here's what would happen. What you can do now is turn that 12-week program for Mr. Smith's knee into a structured 12-week program that you can now apply and adapt to all knee pains going forward. Now, you might be like, well, I want to individualize this, blah, blah. I understand. I'm not kidding. I'm not problem solving with that. What you perceive as um, individualizing is the exercise. I'm not complaining about that. But in reality... What you need to understand is there was likely phases that you did things in those 12 weeks. So the first four weeks, you probably worked on mobility, neuromuscular control, flexibility. That's pretty standard. The second four weeks, you started to actually work on their muscular endurance. You went to 12 to 15 repetitions. After that, you went to strengthening, which you went down to six to eight repetitions with higher resistance. Guess what? You just built out a full strength and conditioning program and you didn't even know that. And my point to this is, what if you could build one home, one strength and conditioning exercise, spend like two hours, just brain sucking hours on a weekend or a night, right? Where you actually have like intent and you're like, what would ideal knee pain strength and conditioning look like? Just think about that. Irrespective of the 
the impairments or neuromuscular control problems that people have. Just get that out of there, right? So if you say, all right, I have 12 weeks, an ideal scenario, and they're not operative, atraumatic, and they have 12 visits, once a week they can see me, what would I do to build a perfect program? What you would do is four weeks of neuromuscular control, mobility, and flexibility. Then you'd go on four weeks of endurance and then four weeks of strength. So my point to this is, I would highly recommend, if I were you in your professional career, it took me like six to eight years to figure this out. So wherever you are, you could do this much faster than I have. And what you do is you sit down and you break out 12 weeks on a Google sheet, on an Excel sheet, on a piece of paper, somewhere you can always reference. And you're going to map out weeks on the top and then um, uh, exercises or the purpose or goals on the left. And what you're going to do is you're going to do four week blocks in an ideal scenario. What would that look like? So if you went neuromuscular control, how many reps do you need in general for neuromuscular control? How many sets? How many exercises? I would say no more than six. Then you're going to go on to muscular endurance. What are the rep schemes? 12 to 15. How many reps? I mean, excuse me, how many sets? Three to five. How many total exercises? No more than six. Then you're going to go to strength or you're going to go strengthening. How many reps? Six to eight. What are the sets? Two to three. How many exercises? Six. And what you're going to do there is, depending on their impairments, you can now drop their impairments with a specific exercise inside this beautiful template that you can now provide to every single knee patient or in every single hip patient or whatever it is, and you just put in the fancy exercise. But the difference is every program now has the purpose and the intent and the focus of developing them not just random, randomly adding exercises and bands. There's no real focus or intent. You're just doing week-to-week -week schedules. There's no way they're going to get better at the same rate as somebody who is exactly planned out and mapped out. So my point to this, if you're overarching the whole thing, you're wasting time designing 12 exercise programs for the same patient times 40 people in a week. Or you sit down for one hard two to three hour block on a Saturday morning and you work on one strength and conditioning program for 12 weeks or eight weeks, whatever you see people for, 24 weeks, whatever it is. And you sit down and you put focus and intent and put your perfect home program together for the knee. And then what you'll realize, you're like, oh my gosh, I can do the same thing for the shoulder. Correct. The difference is you're not going week to week. You're going 12 week blocks, three months by three months. And what does that do for you? It no longer puts the pressure on you as a physical therapist to hold the accountability for the patient or the athlete. So what happens now? Look what happens every single time. You no longer, Mr. Smith doesn't come into you and say, hey, uh, what are my new exercises um, for this uh, week? You're like, well, Mr. Smith, we actually built your program on your initial valuation. Um, you now should have been doing them on the whole week. And now today, we're just going to review the form within that. But you already have your exercises already built out. And so what does that do to a patient or an athlete? It puts accountability on them. And that's what they're not used to. And um, you as a physical therapist, the hardest thing has always been, why aren't you doing your home program? Why aren't you? I can't get my patient to be compliant. Well, three things that go wrong with outcomes. You didn't give them a goal. Okay, if I give them my goals. Great. Did you give them a timeline? Yeah. You're probably not giving them the right resources. It's probably what it is. That's probably the gap. You don't blame it on them. They're the customer. They're the consumer. It's not their fault. Now, if they're non-compliant, that's a different story. In order to get them compliant, you got to figure out where the root is. Did I communicate this wrong? Did I give you the proper resources? Did I give you the right timeline? Well, if it was too too short of a timeline or too late of a timeline, that's a different story. That is my fault. I'm so sorry, Mr. Smith. But you have to own that. Now, the great part is you can put the accountability on them 
by designing something ahead of time, something that requires them to have something to look forward to every single time. Why people don't like physical therapy is because they have to go and show up and be told something new every single time. Why can't you just give me something so I can look forward to over time? And the reality is physical therapists are so scared. We don't want to be wrong. And we don't actually know what we're going to do in eight weeks. (laughs) That's the crazy part. Yet, we treat people constantly for that same amount of time. But what we haven't done is use that same framework and apply it to multiple people. And you can still have customized individual care because I think I love those. Those are the fancy words you're going to try and use. Individualized care, great. You can still have a framework that you can put individual exercises for every single person you see. So that's where you're wasting time. You're building too many home exercise programs. If you can just sit down one time, create the perfect one, now adapt knee pain, shoulder pain, neck pain, wrist pain, whatever, within that, you're welcome. You're, you're going to save five to 10 hours a week simply on just creating one sit-down strength and conditioning program and no longer have to rely on, oh my gosh, what am I going to give, give to this person? It doesn't even matter. Once a strength program is designed and there's progressive overload, the exercises are irrelevant, truly. That's what it is. So um, there you have it. Uh, that's that's really how you can gain five to 10 hours in your week and why I think home exercise programs are overrated and not that important. It's because they could have been done in a true strength and conditioning program. And for those of you who are like, I don't even know where to start. Uh, so that I'm glad that that's a problem <laughs> because it will be a problem. There's, there's going to be several layers inside your professional career that are going to be big challenges and strength and conditioning will be one of them. I don't care if you have a CSCS. I don't care if you've been a strength coach in the past. I don't care if you know what you're doing. The reality is you have people who are really good at strength and conditioning and you have people who are really good at physical therapy. And what happens is it's it's tough to mesh that. I, I, I'll be honest with you. I've been trying to do it forever. And I know strength coaches who try and learn rehab and rehab specialists who learn try and learn strength. It's a hard blend. And when you try and put both of those together, that's an art because you don't want to load them too fast too soon. On the rehab side, you want to make them perfect movers and make them super slow and they don't have any gains throughout the season. So there's always this battle of of movement and load, movement and load. What do I do here? So um, if you're stuck and you're either super advanced, you want to to refine it. Uh, If you're completely uh, at the beginner stage, don't even know where to start. You have to join me at my uh, my uh, sports PT strength and conditioning summit. the The main goal for me, as I built all my courses, those have been listening to my podcast for a while. I built all my courses because I know where your barriers are going to be professionally. Um, your first couple years, you're going to be on Instagram. You're going to be taking all the great CEU courses. You're going to be on YouTube. You're going to be listening to all the same stuff, and then you're going to figure out like, man, I still don't know how to put it together. I've learned all these beautiful skills that I taped. I've done all the stuff. I know how to do instrument assisted stuff, mobilizations, manual therapy, McKenzie. But the problem is I don't know when to apply, how aggressive to be, what's the case that I need to be aware of, where, where, what do I need to be aware of in order to maximize my outcomes. So skills only take you so far. That's how far you're going to go. And then at some point you have to develop and heighten your clinical reasoning. And when it comes to strength and conditioning, a CSCS doesn't teach you clinical reasoning. It just tells you like basic fundamentals. Here are the parameters, but you're still stuck. How many weeks do I go out? When do I make a transition point? When's the deload? And how do I apply it to my athletes? And what if I want to design a wellness program? Those are all barriers you're going to face uh, throughout your career. And I'm here to help. So that's why I created my Strength and Conditioning Summit. It's for sports physical therapists who um, want to know how to apply strength and conditioning principles at a fundamental level if you're starting or if you've been doing this for a little while and you're stuck trying to still work in strength and conditioning but are having trouble blending sports rehab or individuals who've been practicing for a while and they are they want it for themselves. I've had a lot of people attend this for themselves uh, or they have a lot of post-ops and they want that transition back to sport and um, that is an art as well. So um, that's happening June 10th and 11th. Uh, that's virtual via Zoom. Uh, if you are around in San Diego, come join me personally if you want to be in the room uh, while I deliver it. Uh, if not, it's going to be hosted via Zoom for two days. Uh, it's a CEU course 
that uh, I think is going to be a, an absolute uh, pivotal piece in your professional development uh, because it adds another layer. You just really can't get uh, a lot of places and, and within sports PT. So um, that is uh, my sports uh, PT summit. I'm excited to see you there. Uh, I'll be hosting that uh, two days live from San Diego, but uh, you can attend from anywhere you're at. So uh, I am excited to see you there. Uh, if not, I will see you on my next course. If not, my sports PT account. Academy, uh, which just launched last week. And uh, I think we already have five registered. So um, that's my uh, tw my uh, um, uh, monthly uh, uh, mentorship uh, program. So if you guys are interested, uh, you guys can reach out to me too, at Dr. Chris at drchrisgarcia.com. Excited for all the amazing things that are happening. I hope you're living your dream, uh, staying healthy and active, and, um, and just enjoying the the passion you have and the skills and everything that you've been um, searching for in a profession and, and a career. I hope you're living that dream because I absolutely am. So I'm excited to, to be able to help you uh, as you navigate that. All right. I will see you guys on the next episode. Take care.